For those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick. I started Nick's Electronics Repair about a decade ago, and in the last couple years, we have fixed hundreds of these CPC4 modules. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you will know why these CPC4 modules fail and how to fix them. Now, this unit specifically was sent in by a customer that was experiencing a no communication issue. Unfortunately, I can't just plug it into my test vehicle because it is not programmed to my test vehicle. So my first step is to download the customer's data, and then I will go ahead and program it to our test vehicle. We use the AutoVay system for both the programming and the preliminary testing. Let's go ahead and plug in our CPC4 unit. We'll power it on and try to establish a connection. As I try to connect, the first thing I will notice is that we're only pulling 0.2 amps, which is lower than expected. We should be seeing somewhere between 0.24 and 0.26. So what this means is something is not working properly. Of course, we do get a communication error. Next, I'm gonna be showing you a trick to temporarily get the CPC4 unit working. But again, this is a trick. This is not an actual repair. We're only doing this so that we can get the customer's data off of the CPC4. For this next step, we need to open up the unit and we use metal spudgers for that. If you have a defective CPC4 you would like to send in for us to fix, we do offer flat rate services on our website, which I will link in the video description down below. Now that we've removed the plastic case, the trick is going to be to heat up the processor chip with hot air. So I'm using about 350 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna be heating it up for about 20 to 30 seconds. Now the reason this works is by causing thermal expansion of the solder balls between the processor and the circuit board. Those solder balls get microscopic fractures which prevent data flow. By heating the area, we cause the solder to expand, temporarily bridging those fractures and restoring the connection. All right, let's see if we can now communicate with the CPC4. And we're already pulling a proper amperage, 0.25, so that's much better already. And it looks like we're able to connect. Now we can communicate with the CPC4, save the customer's data, and program it to our truck. Now if your truck is pulled over the side of the road and in a bad spot, you can use this trick to at least move it to a safer area. So it does look like our report is showing a 10A10 common powertrain controller, CPC control unit, hardware fault. So we have a hardware failure, and it is actually detecting as a CPC2, which is a common fault we see as well. And that is a current fault. Now we do have a few other current faults. Those are gonna be okay. And that's just because we don't have a lot of these sensors plugged in, but this one is definitely a problem that we need to get rid of. Now that we've confirmed beyond reasonable doubt that the issue is going to be due to the micro fractures on the solder joints between the processor chip over here and the PCV, we can go ahead and begin our repairs. Now, as you may notice, this board is coated with conformal coating for weatherproofing reasons. And in order for us to properly solder to it, we do have to remove that coating first. We also have have a lithium ion battery that we need to remove before we can even begin that process. I have three solder joints for that. So I'm adding solder first because I'm trying to break through that conformal coating layer. And now I can use my desolder wick to remove all that extra solder and the original solder on the joint. Now we'll do the next two joints. Same process, we're adding some solder first. And those seem to be giving me a little bit a hard time. So I'm gonna use my metal brush to try and scrape away a little bit of that burnt conformal coating, and then we'll try again. Okay, and I'm definitely getting a lot better flow now. Same thing with the desolder wick, we'll try to remove all of that extra solder I added. Now, something you'll notice is we also have a little bit of solder on the top side of the joints, so we'll have to remove that as well. And I'm just putting pressure on the joint with the wick. Okay, and that actually looked clear. And finally, the other side. So it's kind of tough to show you and to tell, but the battery is also actually stuck to the PCB because of the conformal coating. So even though we desoldered it, it's still stuck to the PCB. There we go. So this is the layer right here that was still sticking to the battery. And now that it's removed, we can go ahead and use our chemicals to remove the conformal coating. So for that, we're gonna be using this ultrasonic cleaner. We are not gonna be using the ultrasonic portion of the cleaner, but we're using it because it's a metal bin. We'll put our board in here. And now we can add our chemical. and I'm doing just enough so it's fully submerged. 
Now this chemical does take about a half hour to activate, so we'll reconvene in about 30 minutes and then we'll start our scrubbing to remove the conformal coating. So we've actually had the board soaking for about an hour. I have done multiple clean so far. And as you can see, the conformal coating is pretty much all removed. Some of that gloss we're seeing is just the chemical drying off. All right, and now that the board has had a chance to dry, you can see the conformal coating has been removed. We have just a little bit left on that processor chip here, but that's okay. And of course, on the back, it has also been removed. Now we're ready for the removal process of the processor chip, and for that we're going to be using our rework machine. CPC4 modules use a processor chip which is connected to the circuit board via a ball grid array, otherwise known as BGA. Why is this important? The solder balls of a BGA unfortunately are susceptible to microfactors after being exposed to too many thermal cycles. The CPC4 experiences thermal cycles every time the truck is turned on and off. These thermal cycles cause materials to expand and contract. When parts expand at different rates, like a circuit board and processor, it puts stress on the solder joints, which eventually leads to cracks. To improve the CPC4 module's reliability, we recommend reballing the processor with leaded solder, which is what we do with every repair. Now, why does that matter? First off, let's talk about reflowing versus reballing. Reflowing is the process of melting and reforming existing solder bonds on a circuit board, while reballing involves replacing the old solder with new solder balls. Reflowing is quicker, but doesn't fix damaged joints as well. Reballing takes more time, but creates stronger and more reliable connections because it uses new solder balls. Now let's talk about factory solder versus leaded solder. Leaded solder expands and contracts less with temperature changes compared to many lead-free solders. This helps prevent stress and failure in the joints during temperature fluctuations. Leaded solder also conducts electricity better, reducing the risk of problems. And of course, we always use leaded solder for our CPC4 repairs. Because we already have several reball videos on our channel, and to keep this video within a reasonable time frame, we have opted not to show the reball process today. However, if you are interested in seeing it, I will leave a link in the video description to one of our reball videos. We plugged in the fixed CPC4 back into the system. Let's go ahead and try to connect. And we are pulling the correct amperage and it looks like we have connection. Let's go ahead and detect our fault codes. Okay, and it looks like our hardware common powertrain controller hardware fault is now a stored fault, so it's no longer current. Okay, I just connected the CPC4 into the vehicle. I did not put my battery back in yet. We'll do that later, but that should not prevent us from being able to turn on the truck. And it looks like we have a proper repair. I'm gonna go ahead and press the throttle because a no throttle response is a common issue. We're getting throttle response, so that does confirm that that is working and we have a proper repair for the CPC4. All right, let's go ahead and turn the truck off and we'll bring the CPC4 back to the bench. There are a couple more steps that we need to do in order to complete this repair. Our last step is to install the lithium ion battery back onto the CPC4 and then we can go ahead and apply the conformal coating. So we can go ahead we're just going to feed it through. And it looks like one of my pins is bent. Push it back in. There we go. Before we apply the conformal coating spray, I am going to clean off the residual flux from our BGA rework, as well as my battery installation. All right, so we have finished the cleaning. I have already applied our conformal coating and now we have that nice, beautiful gloss that is weatherproofing the whole board and every component. Now my last step, and I'll do this one off screen, is to reprogram the CPC4 back to its original data so that it can work again with our customer's vehicle. If you have a CPC4 that you would like to send in for us to fix, we do offer the flat rate services, which come with a one year warranty. And we'll have links to our website. Those will be available in the description down below. Otherwise, if you found the video helpful or useful, leave us a like, subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching.